the larger molecules necessary for life that are built from smaller organic molecules are called biological macromolecules. There are four major classes of biological macromolecules, carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. And each is an important component of the cell and performs a wide array of functions. Combined, these molecules make up the majority of the cell's mass. It is often said that life is carbon-based. This means that carbon atoms bonded to other carbon atoms or other elements form the fundamental components of many, if not most of the molecules found uniquely in living things. Other elements play important roles in biological molecules, but carbon certainly qualifies as the foundation element for molecules in living things. It is the bonding properties of carbon atoms that are responsible for its important role. Carbon contains four electrons in its outer shell. Therefore, it can form four covalent bonds with other atoms or molecules. The simplest organic carbon molecule is methane, CH4 in which four hydrogen atoms bind to a carbon atom. However, structures that are more complex are made using carbon. In this way, long and branching chains of carbon can be made. Firstly, A, the carbon atoms may bond with of other elements such as nitrogen, oxygen, and phosphorus. B. The molecules may also form rings, which themselves can link with other rings. C. This diversity of molecular account for the diversity of functions of the biological macromolecule and is based to a large degree on the ability of carbon to form multiple bonds with itself and other atoms. Each macromolecule are made of simple units. Here we can see that simple sugars form carbohydrate, fatty acids are a component of lipids, amino acid chains make proteins, and nucleic acids are used to build nucleotides. The process of condensation is common to form larger molecules. As you can see on diagram A, that an OH group from one molecule combines with an H atom from another. A water molecule is formed and the two units are combined. The reverse process is called hydrolysis, splits the OH group and the H atom from a water molecule attaches to the sites when molecules need to split. Carbohydrates are in fact an essential part of our diet. Grains, fruits, and vegetables are all natural sources of carbohydrates. Carbohydrates provide energy to the body, particularly through glucose, a simple sugar. Carbohydrates also have other important functions in humans, animals, and plants. Carbohydrates can be represented by the formula CH2O, and we can put down in parentheses the entire formula N, where N is the number of carbon atoms in the molecule. In other words, the ratio of carbon to hydrogen to oxygen is 1 is to 2 is to 1 in carbohydrate molecules. Carbohydrates are classified into three subtypes, monosaccharides, disaccharides, and polysaccharides. Three main functions of carbohydrates are listed. They are the first source of energy, example, 
They are also a stored form of energy such as glycogen in animal cell and starch in plant cells. Many of these transporters in the cells are carbohydrate in nature. They are also used as a structural component of the cell. Example in the next slide. A long chain of monosaccharides linked by covalent bond is known as a poly, poly meaning many. The chain may be branched or unbranched and it may contain different types of saccharides. Polysaccharides may be very large molecules, starch, glycogen, cellulose, and chitins are example of polysaccharides. Starch is the form, stored form of carbohydrates, sugars in plants, and is made up of amylose and amylopectin, both polymers of glucose. Plants are able to synthesize glucose, and the excess glucose is stored as starch in different parts, including roots and seeds. The starch that is consumed by animals is broken down into smaller molecules such as glucose. The cells can then absorb the glucose. Glycogen is the storage form of glucose in humans and other vertebrates and is made up of monomers of glucose. Glycogen is the equivalent of starch in animal and is a highly branched molecule usually stored in muscle cells. Whenever glucose level decreases, glycogen is broken down to release glucose. Cellulose is one of the most abundant natural biopolymers. The cell walls of plants are mostly made up of cellulose, which provides structural support to the cell. Wood and paper are mostly cellulosic in nature. Cellulose is made up of glucose monomers that are linked by bonds between particular carbon atoms in the glucose chain. A fat molecule such as triglyceride consists of two main components, glycerol and fatty acids. Glycerol is an organic component with three carbon atoms, five hydrogen atoms, and three Groups. Fatty acids may be saturated or unsaturated. In a fatty acid chain, if there are only single bonds between neighboring carbon in the hydrocarbon chain, the fatty acid is saturated. Saturated fatty acids saturated with hydrogen. In other words, the number of hydrogen atoms bond to the carbon skeleton is maximized. When the hydrocarbon chain contains a double bond, the fatty acid is an unsaturated fatty acid. Most unsaturated fatty acids are liquid at room temperature and also called oils. Phospholipids are the major constituents of the plasma membrane. Like fats, they are composed of fatty acid chains attached to a glycerol or similar backbone. The fatty acid chains are hydrophobic and exclude themselves from water, whereas the phosphate is hydrophilic and interacts with water. Steroids have a ring structure. Although they do not resemble other lipids, they are grouped with them because they are also hydrophilic. All steroids have four linked carbon rings and several of them, like cholesterols, have short tail. Cholesterol is a steroid. Make sure to watch the biomolecules interactive animation. 
Proteins are one of the most abundant organic molecules in living systems and have the most diverse range of functions of all macromolecules. Proteins may be structural, regulatory, contractile, protective. They may serve in transport, storage, or membranes, or they may be toxins or enzymes. Each cell in a living system may contain thousands of different proteins, each with a unique function. Their structures like their functions vary greatly. Example, structures, nutrition, enzymatic, transportation, communication, and they are all, however, polymers of amino acids arranged in a linear sequence. The function of proteins are very diverse because there are 20 different chemically distinct amino acids form long chains and the amino acids can be in any order. Each amino acid is attached to another amino acid by a covalent bond known as a peptide bond which is formed by a dehydration reaction. The carboxyl group of one amino acid and the amino group of a acid combine releasing a water molecule. The resulting bond is the peptide bond. To understand how the protein gets its final shape or conformation, we need to understand the four levels of protein structure, primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary. The, the unique sequence and numbers of amino acids in a polypeptide chain is its primary structure. Folding patterns resulting from interactions between the non-R groups portion of amino acids give rise to the secondary structure of the protein. Examples are beta pleated sheet and alpha helix. The unique three-dimensional structure of polypeptide is known as its tertiary structure. This structure is caused by a chemical interaction between amino acids and regions of the polypeptide. Quaternary structures consist of more than one amino acid chain. Each protein has its own sequence and shape held together by chemical interaction. An example can be seen here. When one amino acid is altered from the hemoglobin chain, it leads to a mutation in DNA and compromise its function. Example, hemoglobin molecule where the amino acid from the right side is, is in this image is replaced, it causes a disease such as a sickle cell anemia. Again, don't forget to watch this animation. If the protein is subject to its change in temperature, pH, or exposure to chemicals, this protein structure may change, losing its shape in what is called as denaturation as discussed earlier. Denaturation is often reversible because the primary structure is preserved if the denaturing agent is removed, allowing the protein to resume its function. Sometimes denaturation is irreversible, leading to a loss of function. One example of protein degeneration can be seen when an egg is fried or boiled. The albumin protein in the liquid Egg white is denatured when placed in a hot pan, changing from a clear substance to an opaque white substance. Nucleic acids are key macromolecules in the continuity of life. 
They carry the genetic blueprint of a cell and carry instructions for the functioning of the cell. Two main types of nucleic acids are deoxyribonucleic acid, DNA, and a ribonucleic acid, RNA. DNA is the genetic material found in all living organisms, ranging from single-celled bacteria to a multicellular mammal. DNA and RNA made up of monomers known as nucleotides. The nucleotides combine with each other to form a polynucleotide DNA or RNA. Each nucleotide is made up of three components. Nitrogenous base, a pentose 5-carbon sugar, and a phosphate group. Each nitrogenous base is nucleotide is attached to a sugar molecule, which is attached to a phosphate group. DNA has a double helical structure. It is composed of two strands or polymers of nucleotides. The strands are formed with bonds between phosphate and sugar groups of adjacent nucleotides. The strands are bonded to each other at their bases with hydrogen bonds. And the strands coil about each other along their length. Hence the double helix description, which means a double spiral. The alternating sugar and phosphate groups lie on the outside of each strand, forming the backbone of the DNA. The nitrogenous bases are stacked in the interior like the steps of a staircase, and these bases pair. The pairs are bound to each other by hydrogen bonds. The bases pair in such a way that the distance between the back backbones of the two strands is the same all along the molecule. 